Welcome. Today's class is zero selection, criteria, evaluation, and establishing the relationship. I've been in the industry for about 18 years and have really found myself in the past few years in the role as what I consider a translator, where I'm hired by a pharmaceutical company, a sponsor, or a device company, and I find myself managing a CRO, this, these other third-party vendors that are brought on board to manage different tasks. And I consider it a translational role because, again, everybody has the best intentions and everybody is doing what they think they're supposed to be doing, but sometimes the expectations get lost in the translation process or are just not clearly communicated. So finding myself in this role, I've really used a lot of what I've learned as an auditor, project manager, director, and trainer and really try to bridge the gap to identify what are the needs, what are the issues, and then really, again, make sure that there's just a very, very clear communication and escalation plan. So we apply that to our course today with our learning objectives to review key questions and selection criteria during the CRO evaluation and RFP review process. And I can't emphasize enough how important this initial selection process is, not just what we consider hard criteria in terms of budget, manpower, skill set, location, but also the soft criteria. Is this a relationship that will work? Because when we hire a vendor, when we hire a CRO, we need to make sure that our management systems are going to be able to work together, that our team members are going to be able to communicate and function and work under the same SOPs, under the same terms. So, so much of this needs to be established and determined when we're interviewing these partners and when we're really going through the selection process. Then our second objective for today is to explain the importance and various tools necessary for establishing clear expectations, communication, and objectives for the collaboration. And then our final point is to address techniques and oversight requirements to allow for a high performance alliance. So moving into a definition, because I think one of the other critical elements is to make sure that we all have the same understanding. When we speak about vendors, to make sure that we all are talking about the same thing. So a contract research organization per ICHGCP E6 1.20 defines a contract research organization as a person or an organization, commercial, academic, or other, contracted by the sponsor to perform one or more of a sponsor's trial-related duties and functions. So again, right now we're just reviewing the definition of a CRO. Really, there's a number of different functions that we may transfer, but some of the things we need to remember. According to 5.2.1, a sponsor may transfer any or all of the sponsor's trial-related duties and functions to a CRO, but the ultimate responsibility for the quality and integrity of the trial data always resides with the sponsor. The CRO should implement quality assurance and quality control. 